Welcome to my 23 feet. So my builder said, I cannot verify that it's 23 feet. Hang on, my legs are. Ugh. In Sunday's video, I was saying that I had a builder help me. When I say help, I just finished the doors off. <laughs> he did all the leg work. Um, behind here, there was untapped storage. For anybody who's new, I live in, it's a dormer bungalow, but the attic isn't converted. It was built with an upstairs. Because in Ireland, some dormer bungalows, they're built as a bungalow and then people convert the attics. This was built with an upstairs, but I still have the sloped eaves. I will insert some footage just to refresh your memory. I got the builder to put a floor in for me so it'd be nice, level and smooth. And he plasterboarded the slopey things. What are the slopey things called? Please let me know in the comments. The wooden batten slopey things. There's a house actually um, getting built. I can see it from the window and they're making the, the roof. Those wooden slopey things. He actually skimmed the wall and everything. I'm gonna show you this space inside. I've started just putting a few bits in and then I'll show you me just finishing off the doors and then we have a lot of organizing to do. My office is absolutely chaotic. Let's have a look inside. Before I show you inside, I'm just gonna show you how I finished off the doors. Just because if anybody here who's new, maybe you have some recycled old doors or you just have plain flat doors and you wanna zhuzh them up. My builder was able to get me old recycled doors that are lovely and thick. But I wanted to jazz them up. So I added a bit of trim. I didn't get footage of myself doing the trim because I did it the night before and the lighting was awful, but I do have a video from earlier this year when I did the wains is it wainscoting? Anyway, I did panelling in my living room. I absolutely love it. So I had lots of practice. If you want to check out that video, I will pop a card in and you can check that out if you want to do some panelling, but I followed the same steps. I have two different trim pieces, so I put some trim that I had left over from downstairs as the architrave and then I had some smaller pieces of trim that I cut all the corners at a 45 degree angle, stuck them on with some glue adhesive and I am just caulking. One of my favourite things to do, if you do any woodworking and you have any gaps, wonky cuts, oh decorators caulk is your friend and wood filler, you can just fill in them mistakes and once you paint it looks seamless. I gave the doors a scrub down with some sugar soap to remove any grime. I gave it a coat of primer and then I painted it all. The color I'm using is Color Trend Arctic Blonde. That is one of my favorite whites because in Ireland, with the lighting in winter as well, it can be quite dull. So sometimes a brilliant white can be a bit harsh, but I just love Arctic Blonde because there's a slight bit of warmth to it. I did paint over the hinges, which is an absolute sin because they were just awful. So I wanted to see if it would help. So what I'm gonna do is, I think I'll replace the hinges, but my friend Joanne was saying, if I just take off that old paint and use some gold gilding wax, if I try the gilding wax on them, it might make them look a little bit decent. So I'm gonna try that. And if I'm still not happy, I can just pop on some new hinges. The hinges are the old ones that were already on the door. I have a little bit of snagging left on the doors that I just need to get the builder to look over it, just some bottom pieces and a few tweaks. But otherwise, I think they're good to go. I'm also gonna stick on a draft excluder on the back, on the top and the bottom, just because any drafts coming in from this little lofty area, um, I just wanna stop them from getting into the main bedroom.
Okay, welcome. Actually, my two of my friends, Karen and Rachel, said, oh my God, your niece and nephew will love this if they've watched Harry Potter. Again, apologies with the light. I actually need to, there is a little light here, but I'll turn the light on. This is what it looks like in daylight. My camera won't zoom just because of the light and hang on. So the plaster is drying out nicely. I think he said it'd take a little bit for it to just cure. Obviously it's, the temperature is cold now. So it's taken, like it's dry. But I've noticed as the days go on, the color gets lighter. I'm probably not going to paint this because it is just a storage thing. But both Rachel and my friend Karen were saying that I have never seen Harry Potter. It has been on over Christmas times and I have seen Harry Potter on in the background. Never paid attention to it. I've never seen Harry Potter. And both Rachel and Karen text me and they're like, oh my God, your niece and nephew are going to want to turn that into a little Harry Potter sleeping under the stairs thing. And I was like, Harry Potter sleep under the stairs. <laughs> so I had to Google it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Harry Potter slept under the stairs. I don't think I would put my niece and nephew in here. They were actually over on Halloween and this was, I think the other floor was down, not the laminate floor. And my niece Lily was like, oh my God, you've built us a little house. And I was like, um, it is cold in there. Even though the insulation is on the thing, like it's crazy how you open the doors and you can feel the cold in the draft. So I am gonna put a little draft excluder on the top here. Like these are lovely thick doors, so they do stop the draft getting in. But I am just gonna put a draft excluder on the top and on the bottom. And then that'll like save on the energy. So apparently from that length down there to this length, down here is 23 feet in length. And I'm gonna say this could be f five feet because I'm five, <laughs> accurate measurements. I'm five foot in height and I reckon I could lie down from there to there, maybe four and a half feet. And then that, um, I was saying last week, this is the waste pipe that had to be covered over. I have just moved in some of my wooden pieces and scrap kind of bits of material on my suitcase. If you saw last week's video, I only copped it when I was editing. <laughs> I was wondering where Bjorg had gotten to and I heard scratching and I was like, oh no, she's after getting in the drywall. But she climbed in here and I, it was so fun reading the comment section because so many people were like, oh my God she has just jumped into the waste pipe. The great thing is this can all be screwed off <laughs> if she does it again, but I'm actually, I think I'm going to just stuff it, even with like I have, I don't know what I'll stuff it with, but she hasn't done it since. And if she goes missing, this is one of her spots that I will check, but yeah. I need to, to be honest, I've been keeping it closed. They haven't bothered really. It's just when I'm in here filling it up. So this is, sorry about the focus on the camera. This is how it is looking all caved in, plastered over. I'm sure it'd be nice if, it, if I painted it white, but honestly, this is just storage, so. I also showed the builder the job I did on the doors and he's like, would you like a job? <laughs> I was like, eh, no. Before I head downstairs, I did say to the builder, do I have the same storage option? <laughs> Hello, little <laughs> jeans drying on the radiator. Do I have the same storage here as I do over there or does the wall come down harsher? So he said, yeah, I do have some storage in here, but without cutting a hole in to see like you won't know until you do that. And I also have the same nook here, but there's an electric outlet. But what I was thinking was, if I did a tiny door here, it doesn't, not a tiny door, I mean big enough to get in, but it doesn't have to be 
like that size of a door. It is an option for me to do the same here and do the same here. And because I watched the builder do that one, I'm like, I reckon I could just do the same here myself. The one thing I would be awful with is skimming a wall. Skimming a wall, I don't think I'd be good at that. I'm decent with straight cuts, putting trim on, and I could probably do the doors. But when it comes to the, when it comes to the wall and the skimming, but then I was chatting to a few people were saying in the comment section that they also have done that in their houses. And someone commented saying in Sweden, they're called cat attics. It's now known as a cat attic. <laughs> but a lot of people were saying that they did the same in the house, but they didn't render the walls or anything. They didn't do a fancy. So there is the option for me to maybe open one of them, fit a really nice door, frame it, and just put down like an MDF base. Even just put plasterboard over the nooks, just so you don't hit your head. And then, yeah, at least like these smaller areas are probably great for the likes of Christmas trees and stuff. And for any newbies, I do have a little attic and you can't stand up in it. Well, <laughs> I mean, you could try. You can literally crawl in it and it's not even, the way that that one has a lovely floor in it, this just has all of the joists, is that what it is? So I kind of just have my boxes. Christmas decor is up here. But, oh, the effort every year of having to grow up and pull down all of the boxes. But yeah, up there is my attic and it goes from here to here, but with just a pointy bit of a pointy space. Okay, welcome to the chaos. I do have some storage boxes. We have laundry. Don't worry, I've checked this laundry for, for underwear. <laughs> We're all good. We have craft supplies, chaos, work tool boxes. Um, we have kittens. We have more craft supplies. <laughs> we have kittens. <laughs> and we have scrap fabric. I say we. I mean, me and you guys, <laughs> because this is all my supplies for YouTube videos and crafty bits. Um, that whole corner is scrap fabric. These are full of paints and supplies, but they're fine. They're relatively organized. The reason why everything else is pretty much on the floor is because I don't have anywhere to put it. Oh, these are my art supplies. I have art class this evening. Um, and someone in the video was like, why does she have a kitchen in her office? Um, this is a kitchen I did for my niece and nephew, I think two Christmases ago. I leave it here for them to play with, but they are getting that bit older. So I'm gonna have the conversation with them and say, do you wanna pass it on? Or can I put it in your house? Because it takes up space. It was fine at the time. Um, but there's nowhere else really in my house for it. To be honest, when my niece comes and my nephew spends most of the time in the garden and my niece colours in at the moment, so she's really into colouring. And they come for the kittens, which you are looking extra cute today. Say hello. They're looking very innocent. They wear hyper. I feel like the kittens have entered their teenage phase. Kittens really do grow up quick. But like after a couple of months, they, they're not even recognizable as kittens to me. I'm like, look, look at the size of Bon. I think he's here five weeks, is he? Six, it was the start of October I got the two of them. Now Bjorg is still little, but Bon is just huge in comparison. He gets so big each week. <laughs> oh, I love the little stretches. Like look at the size of them. I actually think Bon, the size he is now, is the size that Blondie was as an adult cat. Another thing I've been hiding. So, do you remember I did the paneling? in this room and I loved it. No, I still do love it. I absolutely love it. Well, 
dun, dun, dun. I had leftover strips and these strips, sorry about the wobbly camera, these strips are the length of this wall and I have had nowhere to put them. So the first thing I'm going to do is, like I don't want to throw them out, like I used, I think I used two lengths to frame the thing upstairs, the, the doors. So I am going to take these because like they were pricey enough, the paneling kits. So I will definitely use them for something. So I'm gonna bring them upstairs. But you've no idea. I know that looks like a really just small thing, but these have been annoying me so, so much. Like I was so close to putting them up for free on adverts, but I was like, no, now I have space for them and I can put all my scrap pieces of wood because wood is so expensive. So first thing I'm gonna do is move these. why I don't have a PO box or accept any kind of gifts um, from people and companies is because I have a small house and I feel like I feel like it's a lot of wastage so if there is a material a product a glue a thread that I want to try I'll generally support a business by buying it from them testing it out first and then if I like it I'll mention it it's different when I work with a company and I have product that I need to use for projects but generally that's the reason why I have a small house I find clutter really overwhelming and lots of stuff oh yeah that's why I don't have a P.O. box because I would probably have to declutter way more often and it's super overwhelming. I also want to say thank you because there were some great suggestions on last week's video because I was saying about donating craft supplies that some schools and some places can be a bit fussy but some of the suggestions I got which were really good was donating to any of the elder care centres so I, I don't like calling them old folks home <laughs> my mum always says that she's like oh I'll be off to an old folks home I don't like I feel like that's kind of mean but what people were saying great place to donate any craft supplies and then also any any women's centres where there may be women and children whether they're escaping domestic violence I thought that this was a great idea for places to donate. So if you were the same and maybe you have paper craft, fabric craft, scrap pieces, um, I think I'm gonna bring them ahead to see if it is something that they want before I land on their doorstep with a box of craft donations. Smells 
Okay, I am about to lose natural daylight. So I have a clear floor. Well, almost. I just have my toolbox over there, my art bag, basket of goodies. I have a L'Occitan collab in December. We're doing our upcycling challenge again. And this is a box of lavender and my microphone. So <laughs> I kind of, I'm kind of organized. This will be gone. I'm using this and yeah, that's just that corner. But I have a floor, all of the nooks are cleared out. I was able, I now have a space for the new Cricut Joy. My other Cricut stuff I have in this cabinet, but I have run out of space in here. Well, I'm sure I could thin out on stuff, but... <laughs> That's for like another video. Maybe in spring, I'll go through all of the craft supplies and stuff. There's definitely tins of paint that I need to, like, you know when there's a dribble left, just bring them to the recycle center. So the corner is empty, so it means I can just get in easily, take out a machine, set it up, put it back. My desk is still messy, but <laughs> That will get thinned out. Um, this monitor and keyboard and everything. I'm gonna take out this, whatever's on here, my cameras and stuff. And then I think I'll move over one of the pet beds because yes, this is their new spot. This is their spot when I'm doing stuff in the morning, put on my little sad lamp, <laughs> do my laptop work and face out. So this is their beds. That noise in the background is the two of them playing with a cardboard box. Here we are. <laughs> Wholesome cat playing in a box content. I've also started a donation box. So I have a box for home decor pieces because tomorrow I'm gonna tackle the hot press. Oh yeah. And I have a cabinet up here. Who remembers when I made doors for this cabinet? I have some clutter up here, so I'm going to go through this cabinet and see what home decor pieces I can donate. To, like, I just want to free up space in here. Ideally, I'd love... Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't have timed that better. So, ideally, I would love to have just more organization and space in here. Basically, if something is in here and I haven't used it in the past year, as much as I like it, I'm sending it off to be donated. 
Like sometimes I'll hang on to things in case I need it for like a display, if I'm working with someone, if they need a display. But if I haven't used it, remind me tomorrow when I go to open this door that something will fall out on me. And then in here, I've only used, oh, I'll turn the light on. Now this looks messy but it's organized in my head. So at the back, I have my larger suitcase that I don't use as much because I normally have 10 kg and that's a bigger one. So I just put that down there. I then have fabric scraps, wallpaper, craft, random, um, <laughs> craft, wood, and this is all wood. So this is all of the lengths of trim and then I have loads of off cuts because I'll always use them for projects and I haven't filled this end. I am maybe thinking of putting, hello bun, Christmas. So those two boxes are Christmas. I know they're going to be coming out soon. So I find it really hard getting up and down to the attic. So I think when I take down the Christmas decorations, I might store them down there. But then again, I'm like, Christmas is once a year. So can you just persevere and get up into the attic? And it's once a year, my friend, it's once a year. So yeah, I just have scrap fabric, scrap wood. The idea is not to have this too full, but yeah, I'm going to, oh, Bon is having. <laughs> yeah, the kittens get a lot of joy out of in here. Oh no. So I have to stop there because I have art class and I've gotten myself filthy. I was like, oh, I can wear this art class. I now have a big black stain on my knee and I spilt tea on my top. But who'll notice, who'll notice? And my sock has fallen down on my shoe. There's no worse feeling than your sock falling down. Does anyone else go through their season of declutter and organizing? I feel like every now and again, it's normally spring, spring cleaning, but I am going through, if it's not bolted down, <laughs> I wanna give it away, which is kind of dangerous because you, when you're in that uh, like declutter, get it out, I find you were like, oh, I regret that. When I declutter, I try not to have a maybe pile because the maybe pile ends up eventually becoming a donate pile. Over the years, I've gotten much better with the decluttering. I don't bring as much into the house. Any of the kind of bits that get cluttered, I generally work stuff like craft supplies and stuff. If I can do the hot press tomorrow, cause that's overflowing with some fabric and that little cabinet upstairs, I would feel lighter. There's also a piece of furniture upstairs that I want to get rid of. I have a plan for upstairs. Definitely won't be getting to do that in this video, but I do want to rejig upstairs. Um, I was saying it last week, where the bay window is and um, where those doors are. I'm gonna get rid of one of the pieces of furniture. I'm not sure which one yet. And then I think I'll just put a nice mirror in that corner. I used to love love clutter. <laughs> I used to love, I think I used to be really maximalist, but over the years it just, like I appreciate it. I love looking at Instagram decor pictures where there's just loads of stuff and it's beautifully curated. But for me to live in it is different. I used to have like teacups everywhere on display um, and now I have them like in cabinets nice and neat. I just feel like clutter in a small house. A small house can get cluttered really quickly. And like I think back to the amount of furniture pieces I used to have as well throughout the years. Um, but there's a lot to be said for just letting a space breathe, breathe and not being so quick to fill every corner. Someone once asked me, am I becoming a minimalist? <laughs> um, not intentionally. I haven't woken up and said, right, today I'm going to be a minimalist. I still like the decor and having accessories out. I just don't like lots of stuff anymore. Like when I pass on that kitchen, I need to talk to my niece and nephew. It will give me joy to just have nothing there in empty space. <laughs> Cause it's been cluttered for so long. But yeah, pretty clutter I like, but no. 
I can't wait for that to be nice and clear. Oh, my art class is beyond so late in an evening. I'm like, it's winter, it's bedtime. But we move, we go. We go, it's winter. We need to go to art class to stop us from going to bed. <laughs> oh, I should have put my little lamp on. Ooh. I am breaking everything today. Me light gives me a lot of light. <laughs> I should have put that on. I'm sitting in the dark talking to you. Oh, that is bright. I forgot how bright that is. I need to bounce it away. I use that lamp. I know I'm waffling now. I use that lamp every morning. This is where I do laptop work, around about seven. And I've been putting that lamp on to try. Apparently it's supposed to, I don't know, stop you. I get tired. <laughs> It's evening time now, I'm allowed to be tired. Um, I don't know if they work. People ask me, does that lamp work? I don't know. Um, maybe, I've been using this since October to try and not, like gradually ease myself into the dark, the dark evenings and stuff and the mornings darker. But with the clocks changing, it's a little bit brighter now at seven, um, for a while anyway. So I've been going out walking first thing. I'll do a bit of laptop work and then about eight o'clock I go out to get like fresh air and proper sunlight. So I don't know if these lamps work. A lot of people swear by them. I'll try anything at this stage to keep me awake in winter. Anyway, I'm looking weird with the uh, reflection. Oh, look how dark it's gone. Okay, <laughs> see you in the morning and we'll do those other two cluttered hotspots and hopefully my mood will be lifted because I will feel lighter with less clutter. Before we move on and declutter some more, a lot of my regular viewers have been messaging saying that I haven't been uploading and where have I disappeared to? I have, this is just the YouTube algorithm and it happens from time to time. So if you would like to catch up on older videos, click on my profile, head to my channel page. If you click the video tab, you can open that up and that will give you all of the recent videos and they'll be done in upload date as well. So you can catch up on any videos that YouTube did not serve you. Oh, and don't forget to check that you're already subscribed. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in Golden, I'll call it home Golden, 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 golden thing in spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing golden I'll follow home golden 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 things gold hair gold ring Okay, it is looking a lot better. So I may get questions because I normally do whenever I mention the hot press. <laughs> I think it might just be an Irish thing to have a hot press. I think you might call it an airing cupboard in the UK. Maybe you do call it a hot press as well. It's basically, that's the hot water, no, that's the water tank. Hot water tank maybe? This is all of the pipe work. That is a pump for the shower upstairs and there's a bath in here. Then I have an electric shower in there as well. This is all the pipe work. So this is going up to my radiators and around the house. And in Ireland, we don't have basements. It's very rare you would have a basement and it's very rare you would also have a garage. So the hot press is the heart of the home <laughs> when it comes to the heating. Now my system is probably older than most. I'd say in new houses, a lot of new houses have water pumps. So if you get a water pump 
it's no not a water pump a heat pump then you can get rid apparently of your tank so I have like a gas boiler that's the other side of this wall have me immersion me immersion timer so I yeah it's an Irish it's a running joke in Ireland yeah um, there's always a panic if you forget to leave the immersion on so yeah we don't have basements to put all of our lovely pipe work and stuff so yeah you'll find these little random cubbies in Irish houses and I, I'm almost certain it's the same in the UK but I think you might call it something else and as for the rest of Europe I don't know what you have I've never in all my travels come across a hot press when I've been in Europe so yeah I don't know and I don't have a boot room <laughs> or literally when you come in my house we have entrance and I always hang off my jackets in here because you end up with jackets hanging on the back of chairs so I put this hook here a while ago but the problem is you just accumulate a lot of stuff but I just have what I need for winter backpack for walking that other one is a laptop so if I'm working in a coffee shop or anything I can throw my laptop in that one this one's my raincoat biker jacket if I'm heading out and I think I have another yeah these are just the ones I would use the most so yeah it is tidy. This is outdoor cushion, outdoor cushion, outdoor rug, pillow, blankie. Managed to thin out on a couple of the bed linen. I am a hoarder of bed linen because it is great for sewing. <laughs> but I rang my mom and she's taken um, some old bed linen off me as well and some old towels because she like cuts them up and uses them but I love the feeling when you close the door and then you open it again compared to what it was like the last time and nothing is falling out on me so that is a win I just have uh, wellies there have some here but yeah the dream in life would be if I had a lovely boot room but if I had a boot room I would just fill it with stuff before I go I have graduated from the pencil and my art teacher has me painted <laughs> look at my oranges I am quite impressed with my oranges I stuck this if you, I don't know if you can see my niece's hang on I'm in the way I don't know if you can see my niece's picture on the fridge I told her I was in art class and she was like she's six by the way and she says, I don't need to go to art class. I know art, let me show you. She heads into the office, whips out all of the colors, draws me a picture, so I'll put it on the fridge. So I sent uh, her mom a message and I was like, will you, show, uh, will you show her my artwork next to hers on the fridge? So I had to learn color theory. You can make, <laughs> People probably already know this. I feel like this is something you learn in school, but you forget as an adult. Basically, if you have a yellow, red, and blue, you can make pretty much every color, and then a little bit of white to make it pastel. So yeah, I was learning and practicing a bit of color theory last night, and just experimenting with paints. Our teacher has us using oil paints, and then I had to paint an orange. So I was playing with, so a little thing I learned is, if I want to lighten something, I would instinctively just pick white, but white will actually make it more pastel. So to lighten my orange, I actually added more yellow. And to darken it, I added more red. Anyway, these are the things I learned. I just thought I passed them on. I'm gonna end it there. Didn't get to touch the upstairs cupboard, because I'm afraid to. Also, apologies about that noise. I have the little um, rollers from my mop in the washing machine. I'm gonna bring, I've got two bags of old sheets, one to drop to my back to my mom and one to drop to the clothing bank. So I'm gonna do that now. So at least there's nothing in my hallway and I've that's out of the house. And yeah, I will see you then in Sunday's video. I still have, 
Probably a bit more decluttering to do, but I definitely feel better this side of Christmas not being as cluttered. So I feel like I can do Christmas decorating now without being like, oh my God, there's stuff everywhere. And at least I have some extra space for it to go. Anyway, that is me. See you in Sunday's video. If you're new, welcome. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Regular viewers, cheeky thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Oh